Many of us want a better tool than the Arduino IDE with more functionality and still the same ease of use. As we saw in an earlier video, one way to go is Platform IO. Today we will test another tool that viewers proposed and see if it is any good. Visual Micro. Gritzy YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. What are our wishes for a better Arduino IDE? Support for the Arduino framework, of course. Ease of use. Auto completion and error checking during typing. Easy navigation to variables and functions where they are defined and where used. And of course, a debugger for our ESP32 or STM32 boards. Not too much to ask for in 2021. The Arduino IDE, unfortunately, only supports the first two. Platform IO has it all and is an excellent tool for complex projects with different configurations and libraries. But it has a learning curve that is not for everybody. Maybe Visual Micro can fit in between? Covering all wishes without the learning curve? When I started with Arduino back in the day, I already used Visual Micro because it has a unique possibility for debugging via serial. I was able to set breakpoints with an Arduino without any additional cabling or hardware. I left it when I started with the ESP8266, which was not supported. Since then the tool has made quite some advances. And today we can use it for different MCUs and with or without a hardware debugger. For programming we get the productivity features of a better Arduino IDE and for debugging the needed tools to stop the processor and inspect variables on the fly. A feature completely missing in the Arduino IDE. Before we continue, the tool is an add-on to the free version of Visual Studio and it costs $12 per year for hobby usage with a six weeks free trial period. It is developed by two British gentlemen, Tim and Simon, who have to get food and shelter, especially in these hard Brexit and Corona times. So this price is okay for me. I also donate money for the Arduino IDE from time to time because these guys changed my life considerably and the licensing is fair without auto renew. If you are still with me, I tell you my experience with the tool. To find out if it works, I not only wrote a blink sketch. No, I used it to port my Morse trainer to the ESP32 and free Artos. A relatively complex project involving real-time aspects as well as an interrupt-driven PS2 keyboard interface. This project also serves as a preparation for my planned Artos video. But where shall we start? As always, the best is in Media Res. Like that you can later decide if it is worthwhile to install the tool. Here is how it looks like when you program with it. I did not do a lot of user interface massaging and mostly use the default settings. Visual Studio offers all the comfort to adapt these windows to your needs if you want. You even can choose a dark design. But because we want to keep our familiarity with the Arduino IDE, I keep it blue and white. Let's start with navigation. As said before, this is the developer's view. The main window displays the code and an overview for fast positioning. The left window shows the project structure with all files and, inside the files, the functions. You even see the global variables in the respective file. And of course, if you click on something, your coding window automatically positions to this place and you can quickly work on a change, for example. The third window has a few tabs where you can find your compiler and linker's output and a powerful reference view called find symbol reference. If you select any variable or function in the editor and press F12, you find where it is defined. 
With Shift F12, you see where it is used. These two keys, together with the backward and forward arrows, are my main navigation buttons. Searching for a function or going back to where you came from is incredibly productive. And with a right click, we get to the rename menu, also a cool feature. Because Visual Micro knows your valuables and functions, it only renames those not similarly sounding comments or part of other variables. If you use search and replace for renaming variables in the Arduino IDE, you know what I'm talking about. Also, if you hover over variables or functions, you get additional information. You do not need to go to the variable definition if you just want to know if it is int or car, for example. The next topic is coding speed. This topic has two parts, auto completion and error checking. If you start to write, the editor proposes matching texts. If you open a parenthesis or a quotation mark, it adds the closing parenthesis or the second quotation mark. Nothing special, but comfortable. It also counts the length of strings. All minor things, but we miss them in the Arduino IDE. The second, even more time saver, is that the editor already shows you most of the syntax errors. Like that, you do not need to compile your code just to find out you forgot a closing parenthesis, for example. It also shows you when you forgot to declare a variable. But pay attention, sometimes it shows errors where no errors are, because it is not aware of a library function, for example. Next, we look at the essential menu points and the right selections for our Arduino projects. Here we select our board. You find all boards installed in your Arduino IDE. And here we select the COM port. With this button on the right, you can open the serial monitor. I like its window docked, but you can also have it floating if you want to put it on a different screen, for example. And here I always select Debug. Here you can choose your hardware interface board for programming. No programmer means that you upload via serial. Visual Micro supports the usual boards like the ESP Proc or the Olimex used in my Platform I.O. video. You find the relevant wiring diagrams for all boards on their homepage. For the ESP32, we use the JTAG standard. So we have to connect 5 pins plus ground and 3.3 volts. Today I use the ESP32 PROC, which seems to use the same chips as this F2232H board. The main difference between those two boards is those handy connectors. I show you later why I like them. If I enable this button, the uploading is done via the programmer hardware. Much faster than with serial. Also a nice feature. And here we can select the hardware for debugging. Usually it is the same as for programming. If you do not have one, you still can choose serial. We will later see the differences. I strongly suggest using a hardware debugger for ESP32 and STM32 projects. Here I always choose no project optimization for the compiler while debugging. It seems that you can also choose default optimization. All these selections are stored with your project and once selected you can forget them. With one exception. If Visual Micro refuses uploading through the programmer because the board is in a weird status, we have to switch Enable Programmer off. Like that, the MCU is reset and the standard serial upload is selected. The next time we can select Enable Programmer again. That's it. Now we can hit Start and Visual Micro does its thing. It compiles and links the programs uploads it to the board and starts the debugger. And the user interface changed to the run configuration with different windows like serial monitor, the watch windows for variables or the call stack to find out where your code loops if you lost it. Now comes the hardware debugger's power. Even if the code runs, we can go wherever we want in the code 
and set a breakpoint, for example. As soon as the program passes this line next time, it stops and shows us the variable's values in the watch window. A few variables are automatically selected and we can add more if needed. From there, we can single step through the sketch. We can jump over functions or dive into them if we are interested in their behavior. But pay attention. If you press step into, you quickly get into the bowels of the Arduino code or with the ESP32, even worse into free RTOS. Sometimes you do not find back and get this page and your code is locked. This is why I do not use single step a lot. I instead set a breakpoint and use continue or even more comfortable, press this small arrow. It is like an ad hoc breakpoint and makes the code run till here. By the way, if we hover over the variables in the code, we see their current value. Also very handy. All this debugging is done without recompiling the code. We even can define actions in a breakpoint and lock a variable every time the program passes by. The program does not stop. Like adding a serial print statement, but without recompiling. How cool is that? And here is the difference if we choose serial debugging instead of hardware debugging. In this case, Visual Micro automatically inserts serial print statements and other stuff into the code before uploading. But we cannot add or change the place of a breakpoint during operation. If we do so, we have to recompile and upload again. You see why I love hardware debugging. We can only have four active breakpoints. By the way, this seems to be a limitation of GDB, the open source debugger also used by Platform.io. Now a word of caution. The ESP32 does a lot of things you are not aware of. For example, Wi-Fi traffic runs in the background. Or free RTOS also runs invisibly. If you stop the code with a breakpoint or a single step, the CPU can crash. Not because of your code, but because of you blocked something important. If this happens, usually you get a panic message in serial and you have to restart the MCU. This is not done by hitting the reset button. The debugger would get crazy if you did that. Because the code is still on your board, you just hit attach process and your code continues to run. Please add this line to the boards.txt file. Then your sketch always start from the beginning, which is very important in the case of a crash. Without this line, it would continue where it was. With these debugging functions, you quickly find out where you made a mistake or where you forgot something. What else do we need to know? Visual Micro has a YouTube channel where you find videos on how to install the tool as well as tips and tricks if you want to know more. No need to show it here. I leave a link in the description. And they have good documentation where you get much more details like how to deal with libraries, etc. Those functions are similar to what Platform.io offers. But I assume the casual maker will not use them. I also leave a link to their forum where you will get support if needed. And if you say hello to them from me, they know where you come from. If you start a new project, you get several template projects. I usually use the Arduino Simple Empty Project. Because I had an existing Arduino project with an INO and many .h files and libraries, I created such an empty new project in a new folder outside the Arduino sketch folder and closed Visual Micro. Now I copied all files from the Arduino sketch folder into the Visual Micro folder. The empty .ino file was overwritten. As the last step, I opened Visual Micro and imported the .h files into my new project. I strongly suggest only use one project per solution. Then F5 or the start button has the same functionality as upload or F9 on the Arduino IDE. The libraries can stay where they are in the Arduino libraries folder. And the best, if you want, you can always come back 
and open the .ino file with the Arduino IDE. Both environments are very compatible. A big difference to platform I.O. which is not backward compatible. Another addition. The ESP Proc debugger boards offers two ports. If you only change interface 0 with SADIC, you can connect the serial monitor through the remaining serial connection. Here is the diagram on how to connect the debugger as well as the serial pins to the ESP32. In this configuration, you can upload and debug your board without USB connection. You even can work with custom boards without a USB to serial adapter. Coming back to the connectors. I created these two cables and labeled them using my brother printer and printable heat shrink tubes. Very handy, because now I know to which GPIO pin I have to connect them. Finally, what is my verdict? If you are a casual Arduino IDE user and do not plan to create big projects with different versions and library dependencies, Visual Micro is the best choice. Even if you only work with standard Arduino boards or do not want to use a debugger. Only the comfort of IntelliSense showing you the errors before compiling or the automatically inserted quotation marks or parentheses is something you get used to and do not want to miss afterwards. And the debugger really helps to find tricky errors and increase your productivity. If you need more, platform IEO probably is the better choice, as we see for example with the Tasmota project. It uses all the cool configuration helpers to create hundreds of different variants with a press of a button. But you have to learn more. Its look and feel are further away from the Arduino IDE and the code is no more backward compatible. I have to say, I paid the $12 before the three months were over and I enjoyed working with Simon who helped me to get a grip on my complex Artos project. This was all for today. As always, you find the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.